Good morning. Good Welcome. morning, everybody. April the 11th. That's right. Welcome to church. It's great to have you with us. It is. I'm Luke Taylor. This uh, is Matt Wildsmith. Yes, that's right. And um, they are our names. You probably more affectionately call us LT and Wiley at home, don't you? That's right. Hashtag. You know when people are at home, they're just chatting about us, like our, their friends, because we're their friends. Yeah, you. Cooking spaghetti. Like, oh, how funny was Wiley? Yeah, how good spaghetti? Spaghetti. I just feel like spaghetti. it now. Yeah, but it's well. it's early morning. Early morning on a Sunday, we... we I mean, you could have spaghetti for Communion's breakfast. coming up. Communion is coming up. We've got a great service. Um, we're going to have a hear a word from Pastor Mark in a moment. Yeah. We're going to receive communion with one of our teams and worship. All the things that you love about Sunday mornings right. online. And things. Pastor Kylie and her team are online right now yes. in the chat. Yes, they are. They are the legends, our online campus team, who we love. So why don't you drop a comment into them right now, telling them how much you appreciate and value their... Love and support. Yeah, <laughs> their attention. Their attention, yeah. <laughs> Love yeah. and support. Say that's good morning it. to them. Yeah, that's it. Say good morning. And um, how have you been? I've been great. Okay. Life's good. April, I mean, it was yeah. Easter last weekend, which I was know. a cracker. Love yeah. that new song, Mercy, yes. by Pastor Darlene. Yeah. And we've got to get that out. We've got to get it out. out. What else do we have to get out? What's new? What do we need to talk about? Well, are you ready for this? What? Hold your horses. Because this is news coming live to you right now, never before talked about. Ever. Last year when we had our online gathering, we said, "Say, stay tuned. Yeah. Because we're like, we don't know what's going on. I'm but as of right. today, holding on the horses, we can confirm that Hope BC's gathering for 2021 will be going ahead. Oh! On the 26th to the 28th of August. Offline. And online. Whoa, both. In person and online. So you can, as of right now, you can go and register. It's gonna start on the Thursday night. It's gonna be a full day Friday into the evening and then a half day on Saturday. So it's gonna be fantastic. Guests announcements will be coming in the coming weeks and all the fun things that you need to know about. But we did wanna just let you know, we have the dates, you can now register. Follow the link in the chat right now to get yourself registered. It is gonna be an amazing few days together as Hope to see. So we can't talk about the themes and all those things yet. Oh, well. Hold on, I'm holding on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I wanna, I wanna, I just want to get the dates out, the fact that you can register. Uh, Look, we we are talking about this whole concept of the old has gone, the new, has come. Ah, 2 Corinthians so, uh, 5, 7, 8. Yeah. My um, mum made a little jingle to that when I was a kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's just a memory verse yeah, that I remember. It's, so. it's good. So anyway, uh, save the date, register. It's so exciting. And before we go any further, you can join us this morning in giving um, as by, sorry, clicking the link in the chat below or going to our Hope to See website or our Hope to See app, following the links on both of those platforms. And um, look, we want to thank you for being generous givers to our online campus. You guys are amazing. So please join us in giving this morning. And now we're going to head over to our wonderful team for communion and worship. Hello, church family. I love that I get to share with you today around our communion time. Galatians 5, chapter 1 in the Passion Translation says, Let me be clear. The anointed one has set us free, not partially, but completely and wonderfully free. We must always cherish this truth and stubbornly refuse to go back into the bondage of our past. After the name of Jesus, freedom is my favourite word, as I personally have experienced what it is to be in bondage and I have experienced what freedom is. You know, Christ died for your freedom, that you can walk in freedom today. You don't need to wait to get to heaven to experience this. Sometimes it's easy to go back to what we know, the chains 
or familiar behaviours of the past. You know, everywhere you go, the Spirit of the Lord is. And it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want to encourage us today, as we hold the bread, the representation of Jesus' body, and the juice that represents His blood poured out, that Jesus bled and died. He did it so we can walk in freedom. And as we take this today, would you close your eyes and remember that He died for us to walk in that. Lord Jesus, I thank you that your body was broken and your blood poured out so we can walk in freedom, Lord. I thank you that you said it's for freedom that you set us free. And Lord God, we remember, we take time now and we remember this, Lord God. Let this be a revelation in our everyday life, Lord Jesus. Lord, may we represent the freedom that you died for us it cost you your life, Lord Jesus. May we remember all the days of our lives. Let's take together, family. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that you poured out, Lord Jesus. We thank you today. We remember the price that you paid and Lord Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, you will remind us in our everyday to walk in the fullness of the freedom that you paid for us to walk in. In your wonderful name, amen. Bless you, church.
Well, hello church, great to be with you again in our online campus here. I hope you had a wonderful Easter celebrating Jesus' resurrection and all that he has done for us. We're continuing around the series of Confident Hope and in particular today, I want to lean into a topic of what I've titled New Day. Remember, we're pulling from the first few chapters of Joshua And under Joshua's leadership, there were so many things that were going on. I mean, it was completely different season under Joshua than the 40 years of wandering the wilderness under the leadership of Moses. But the one thing that did not change under both of those leaders was the promise and the presence of God's presence, symbolized by the Ark of the Covenant. And here we are picking up in Joshua chapter 3, talking about that ark. Let me read verse 11 to you this morning. And it goes like this, says, Look, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. This was going to be the only thing that was the same as under Moses' leadership. They were now going to follow the ark. Yet, Under Joshua's leadership, there were many new things for the people of Israel to process. Let's list a few of those out. There was the new territory that they were to occupy, that they were now no longer nomads, just wandering from place to place. I mean, there was new people in leadership. I mean, Joshua was new to them in that sense. They were used to Moses. They were also in this new season ahead of them. They were to now build and occupy new homes and places where they could plant their trees and plant their crops, build buildings, and really, in that sense, put down roots in this nation. There was to be new battles. There was to be new food sources. Remember that they were living on manna, wandering through the desert. There was going to be new systems of relationships. Let me explain that to you. That the tribes were now going to be living in their own designated land instead of just living as one collective nation on the road, moving around all the time. They had to learn how to care and protect They had to become now good stewards of the land that God gave them. So my question really today that I want to spend a little bit of time going around is how do we position ourselves for the new thing? Learning and looking at the model of Joshua and Israel as they um, were transitioning or pivoting the new trendy word at the moment into all the promises that God had. Well, let's pull from Joshua chapter 3, and let's look at those first um, number of verses here in Joshua. It says, Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. All through this series, we can see the need for courage. I mean, courage, obviously, God was trying to impress upon Joshua to um, take up courage, but also, I believe, for the people of Israel. They needed courage to go into this new season. After 40 years of doing something, and now they're about to cross this river and go into a whole new way of living. This early journey, this next phase of setting up about crossing the river was really the edge of of what was to happen in the future. There was um, battles yet to come in front of them. All through this series, we see the need for courage. 
The courage for Joshua, obviously God was speaking to him and saying, please take up courage, but also listen to this, for all the people of Israel. See, this early journey about that we just read in Joshua chapter three, took them to the brink of an uncrossable river, to the edge of their major battles that were yet to come, and importantly, to the beginning of their new promises that were to be fulfilled. For some people, getting out of bed in the morning and embracing the challenges of the day is tough enough. Or maybe for some people, the challenge of simply um, letting go of the old way so that you can pick up the new opportunities. It requires courage either way to embrace change and new seasons. But this is what confident hope does. It says that we seize each day in Jesus' name. I love this scripture in Lamentations chapter 3. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. God, great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. There's something about starting a new season early in the morning. I love getting up early in the morning. When you well, imagine those people when they were uh, on that journey, when you, they see the Ark of the Covenant move, then they were to leave their place and follow after it. I just thought about that reflecting on this message and just imagine the groups of people sitting around and waiting and chatting. And some people, maybe they were pacing and saying, come on, move the ark. We want to move into the promises. Maybe they were just impatient. Others were probably sitting in some sort of trepidation and go, when the ark moves, then it's all on. We can't go back. But the one thing that was for sure, everyone in Israel was watching out for the ark. It was their complete and only reference during those three days. Probably you could say that the whole point of life during those three, three days circled around movement of the ark. Watching for the movement, thinking about the movement. Did I see it move? I wasn't quite sure. I had to think about it again. I had to look twice. Did it really move or not? I mean, maybe that was the thing that in some ways triggered a new way of living. God loves to do new things new ways. The writer in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, puts it this way. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do, for I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun it. Do you not see it? The writer writes. Following his presence, the most dynamic being in the universe, God is not passive, he's not tired, and primarily, he desires friendship with us. God has new days ahead for us. God has new ways ahead of us. Our role, our positioning, how we posture ourselves, like those people on the riverbank, is to be looking and watching for God's signals, ready to move when he moves. So the question, again, that I want to ask as I dive into my second point is, Again, how do we position ourselves for this new thing? Again, my second point is I've just written here a new direction. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 4, this is how it goes. It says, since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Talking about the Levites carrying God's presence. Stay about a half a mile. That's 800 meters in a metric sense behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the ark. I mean, this scripture has some profound wisdom. Let me explain. Even though we love and honor God, we should never be familiar with him. This was the message that they were sending in this uh, physical sense to not just get right up next to the ark, but to stay some distance. We are not equal to God. We're not equal to his ways. And um, there'll always be new things for us to learn about God himself and also his ways. We are all in need 
of some guidance and everyone out there can say amen to that. Uh, I amen that myself. There's days I just go, God, you're going to have to show me today. You're going to have to lead me today. Should I go to the left or should I go to the right? Which way should I go? I need guidance and I'm sure you need guidance as well. These people were looking to God's presence for guidance about how to access the promise that was in front of them. You see, it's not weakness to follow someone else. I mean, really, um, if you want to go somewhere in life, uh, it, it's, it's actually quite a smart thing to do, to follow someone who's gone ahead of you. The whole nation of Israel were to follow the Ark of the Covenant into this new world. I mean, they were both um, leaders at one sense and also being led at the same time which I think is a great thought for us today. I mean, if you call yourself a leader, you can lead some area of your life, but you can also position yourself at the same time to be led by somebody else. I mean, I just think those questions should arise for all of us thinking about the context of being led. A question I've got, which is that that's very simply saying, who, who are you following? And um, how familiar are you with them or how distant are you towards them? I mean, a second question could be, um, who do you go to for wisdom and guidance? And another question could be, who, who in your life can correct you if it's required? I mean, that's a powerful question. And just for, a, for the sake of it, last thought is, how authentic are your relationships really? This is, by the way, one of the great values of a healthy life group, whether that's online or whether that's physically in presence or however that you connect with another group of people. It's such a powerful tool in your life. I mean, the reason why I believe it's such a powerful thing is that it should be a place where you can build genuine, authentic relationships which are strong enough for you to be accountable to them and also deep enough where you would call them friends. We tend to become who and what we follow. Recently, a leadership teacher that we had speaking to our team made this statement. He said that we're all becoming the collective average of our five best friends. Interesting thought right there. My last point today is how do we position ourselves for the new thing? Well, I would suggest to you there needs to be a sense of new consecration about us and our relationship with God. Continuing in Joshua chapter 3, verses 5, we'll pick up from there. It says, Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves or consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priest, Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. So they, st so they started out and went ahead of the people. You see, consecration is not a once-off or a single moment in our lives that we ticked off on our spiritual journey. Consecration and sanctification, that these things are a lifelong pursuit, allowing God's character to be formed within us. Every person who is born again is instantly justified before God. Absolutely no doubt about that. Yet there are still elements of personal change required. They are critical to our growth and our spiritual health. For the nation of Israel to complete its calling of the promised land, they needed to re-consecrate their lives. Every tribe and every family would need to do their part in terms of a consecrated group to bring about the best possible outcome for the nation. The priests had to lead the way by carrying the symbol of God's presence, but everyone else had to be set apart for their own calling and their own purpose. Each family had to fight their own battles in that sense. They had to run their own finances and find their own land and build their own homes and cultivate their own resources. And yet it was such a holy calling to do so. But first, they had to be united in consecration in terms of the adventure ahead. The crossing over. The crossing over from the 
old ways to the new ways. In the New Testament, Jesus is written about clearly as our great high priest. Jesus crossed over from death itself to bridge the gap between us and God so that now today we can inherit all that God intended for us, all that God had promised us both now and for eternity. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says, this means that anyone, anyone, not just some, not just a selected few, but anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So my question that I've been proposing to you today is how do we position ourselves for the new thing? Accept God's mercy for new days ahead. Accept new ways to access the promises ahead. And I believe accept the surrender again, again and again, that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Hey, I'd love to hear from you about this message and to communicate and help you go further in your faith. You can write to me at um, uh, talktous at hopeyouc.com. Again, talktous at hopeyouc.com. I would love to hear from you. Let me pray for you today. Father, I just thank you for these diligent and faithful people who are inquiring about how to go on the journey uh, that you have promised ahead. Father, as we reflect in these scriptures, what you've embedded, these messages for us today, that you will, Holy Spirit, you will speak to us and, and encourage us and to help us to change whatever we need to change so that we can uh, do all that you have set ahead for us. Father, I pray that you will bless these beautiful people in your strong and powerful name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless your church. Do it, Lord.
Hey, well, what a fantastic morning it has been online with you today. We're stoked to be worshipping with you in this manner. Um, Look, as you would have heard in the sermon, Pastor Mark would have offered anyone an opportunity to respond to the gospel, um, to receive salvation, to say, hey, Jesus, I want to follow you. And um, now if that's you, we would have a, a little link that goes up in the chat room, both on our online platform. And if you're on Facebook or on YouTube right now, you can just head over to hopeyc.tv. You'll be able to find that link there. Basically, if anything in your heart or in your mind this morning is questioning, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, you can talk to one of our amazing team online click the button and they will help you get started on this journey. So please, if there's anything in your heart and your mind that's saying, hey, I want to I want to know more about Jesus, why don't you click that button today and uh, we'd love to get you started on the journey of faith. So what a great morning. What a great oh, word. Amazing. So cool. And that's right? the best decision you could ever make, Ex- which is exactly. fantastic. i tell you about another decision. It's definitely <laughs> not the best decision you could ever make. But you that's can decide good. to join us on Facebook. Exactly. Our online family Facebook yes. page, which is yeah. Hope Unlimited Church Online. If you wow. type that in on Facebook, you will get to the family page. We that's are so a family, yes. not just a community or a church, but we're yeah. family here. And exactly. that's where lots of information and updates yeah. will be. So make sure yeah. that you join yeah. up. I don't know if it's called joining <laughs> like on Facebook. It. You just or, click it. You oh, you just click like. it. There you go. I just say <laughs> stuff and Luke tells you really what goes on. So make sure you like yeah. it and join the family there. That's it. Hey, because not only, on, you know, it's great to have you with us here on Sunday, but on our Facebook, that's an, just an, another great midweek connection. And you'll see our mugs will probably pop up every now and then. <laughs> you'll see some stuff come through from Pastor Kylie, some encouraging scriptures, things like that. So yep. do engage with us. Um, now, we're going to close with the blessing. Yep. So good to have you online with us today. So let's say this out together. If you're joining from home, lift your voice. I pray that God, God, who is the source of hope, will fill fill us completely with joy and peace because because we we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We love you, church. See ya.